Hello, it's the official podcast episode 360. Charlie has told us all that this episode is going to be extraordinarily hype. Why? Mm -hmm. Tell us. I'm ready for it. Well, do I have news for you? Will Smith just spoke up about his wife, and you'll never guess what he said. It was all my fault. I apologize. Yeah, it's going to be something super pathetic, right? He said, Mm -hmm. it's all good. He said, yes, I'm happy. It's unconditional love, and that's... All there is to it. So that's my update. Uh, here's a controversial opinion. I think she's probably the most evil human being alive. <laughs> <laughs> she is go- She. I see pure wow. evil whenever I see pictures of her. I, I really do. It's like an uncomfortable level of malice. Wait, you guys are missing behind the, those eyes. The back story for as a refresher, Will Smith slapped who was a Chris Rock mm-hmm. yeah. at some award ceremony. This has been going on much longer than that, though. This has been has. like the last 20 years of their oh, relationship. Yeah, no, for sure. She sleeps around on him. It started with the red table where she humiliated him into almost crying on TV, essentially. Did then they had him. the award ceremony that no one except 50 people watched until Will Smith slapped Chris Rock, and then everybody saw that clip. And he said something along the lines of, Keep my wife's uh, name, name out of your name mouth. Name out of your fucking something. mouth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's what he was trying to do with the slap. By the way, he was he was up there like trying to slap the name out of his mouth. <laughs> that, that's what yeah, the strategy I know. was. With a like cartoony anime slap too, and then Jada Pinkett Smith, his wife, came out and said, "Quote: First of all, I'm really shocked because, mind you, I'm not there. We haven't called each other husband and wife in a long time. I'm like, what's going on right now? Keep my wife's name out of your mouth. I'm really worried for Will because I don't know what's going on." <laughs> So she throws him under the bus. Yeah. Oh my god. He's <laughs> he's trying to like defend her honor, and she's like, oh, I don't even know this guy. <laughs> like, what the fuck? Just I know he he fi- the cuck finally side. snapped. The rage came out in a moment, and I bet you he was like thinking, Yeah, I had a. I'm an alpha male now. Jada's gonna come back to me. She's gonna fuck. Uh, she's gonna stop fucking my son's 18 year old friends. Uh, but no, Jada <laughs> just came out and said, We're not married anymore. Uh, it's, like, it's not like it. It's not what it looks like. I don't know this guy. I don't care about him. I've never met Will Smith as my favorite meme. <laughs> <laughs> Wife? Oh yeah, you're that guy. <laughs> Always sitting in the corner <laughs> and on that couch while I'm having oh, sex. <laughs> yeah, wait. Oh, husband. Right, right. <laughs> the guy in the closet. Yeah, I think I remember him. And then um, apparently Will came out after Jada said this, he, um, in a letter to the New York Times, he said that this was kind of a revelation to him that, quote, kind of woke him up. And that Pinkett Smith, 52, was more resilient, clever, and compassionate than Will understood. Ah, uh, yes, compassion. That's that's the impression I get as well, Will. What the fuck is wrong with you? How are you... You're like the most... One of the most powerful men... Uh, in in Hollywood, and you're letting this woman like keep you under her bully thumb. You. Like what? What? Yeah, bully you. What? 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 Kind, why does she have this level of power over him? Well, I don't so understand. What I, I wanted, don't understand. Oh, let me explain. He because he explained. Okay. He, uh, okay. Okay. Go. So what I was referencing is two days ago, he made a speech with Jada about this whole situation. He was talking about how he was like on a vacation basically for a few weeks, and then when he got back, all the news hit all at once. And fundamentally, his speech boils down to, if you love somebody, you love them unconditionally, no matter what. So he's totally fine with all of it and thinks it's just a part of like a, you know, a strong bond that he can stay with her through Mm. all of this, through all of their disagreements, through all of the unpleasantry, this and that. So he really thinks like all of this is somehow like good for him in the relationship almost. Where do we, where do we get to the part where... She loves him at all, like even an ounce. I'm of not love. sure. So what Will Smith is saying is she could drop a nuke on his parents' house, and he'd go, "Ah, it's all good. I yeah. love you unconditionally." It's, it does much. sound like a, def- a defensive, like abuse. She did drop a nuke on his career. Yeah, yeah, she did. She shit all over that. Well, he kind of he pulled the trigger himself, That's, though. To be fair, I mean. Yeah. That's all also really horrendous advice because all he's it doing is. is enabling abusive relationships. Abuse. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. sounds like an abused damsel too. Listen yeah. to this. Bad, Continu- bad he continues. Spouse. 
He continues, quote, When you've been with someone for more than half your life, a sort of emotional blindness sets in, and you can all too easily lose your sensitivity to their hidden nuances and subtle beauties. This is called Stockholm Syndrome, by the way. Yeah, did, did she write this for him to read out? <laughs> it's, oh God, what's the term where you've invested so much you don't want to... Sunk cost fallacy. Yeah, sunk cost fallacy, thank you. It's sunk, It's 100% sunk cost fallacy. He thinks, okay, I've got three kids with this woman, or two, or however many. Uh, I've spent this much time with her, this much of my career, blah, 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 blah. I can't leave her now. I have to love her. Like, that's all it is. It's both. It's both. Yeah. This is what abused people say, is they rationalize the shitty relationship to themselves. It's, well, he has his subtle beauties, you know, he doesn't always just beat me. Sometimes he's nice, you know, it's just his hidden beauties. And I guess in Jada's case, these hidden beauties are truly, truly hidden deep beneath the surface because I'm not seeing any of it. What is the nuance here? <laughs> I have no idea. You constantly humiliating yourself to quote unquote defend your woman's honor. And then she comes out and says, I don't even know you. <laughs> Why did you call me your wife, creep? <laughs> My boyfriend really wouldn't appreciate you saying that I'm your wife. <laughs> I dumped your ass six years ago, Will. Get over it, nerd. Yeah, move on. It's getting yeah, weird. Yeah, he's so fucking pathetic. So pathetic. It I just really want him. To, I I it's just so want him sad. to leave her. I want him. I want him to leave her. Like, take your power back, Will. Do something for yourself. <laughs> she's she's Why? out there talking about how much better Tupac would have been as a lover, or would have been as a better partner, and how she, she wished she was in the <laughs> timeline where she's. You, you guys didn't see this when she was talking about Tupac. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, she called Tupac her soulmate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The guy she had a fling with like five minutes before he died, I think. Probably. Well, no, they, they were they were okay. They were actually pretty close, to be fair. Like, well, how close? How, for how long? Not nearly as long as Will's know, been around long, in the picture. But, well, no, not not for as long as Will's been in the picture, but a long time still. It'd be it'd be an enormous slap in the face to your girlfriend or your your partner, like your your um your wife, if you've been together for like twenty years, had kids and stuff, and then you go back and say, oh yeah, the 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 chick I was banging for like three weeks before you showed up was actually my soulmate. Yeah, it's so fucked up. It's it so really fucked is up. so fucked up. <laughs> It's even more yeah. fucked up, though, that Will just seems to do it all with a smile on his face. He just <laughs> deals with it. Like, he's, he's getting better at it, too. Like, he hasn't cried in a while about it, so I think he's starting to become numb to it. Is he even in the public eye anymore? What, what yeah, that's is. what I was referencing. He just did a speech with his wife about all this. Oh, oh, okay, yeah. Has he stopped doing movies, though? Yeah, he's been uh, outcasted from Hollywood after the slap. True, yeah. yeah. Thank God. He had some stinkers before that slap, too, so that was just in time, honestly. What, what what about uh, Jada? What what does she actually do, or what did she do before Will Smith? Like, why is she a prominent figure? I think she used to do some music for a little while. I could be I wrong though. I don't remember. She's done she's done some acting. She was in Matrix. I remember that. She does music oh, yeah. as well. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't understand what the what why why she's still a thing because I think. Well, right now she's only a thing because of this Will Smith yeah. stuff. So do you think it's just a strategy from her? Um, half and half. Yes and no. Hmm. I think there's like a level to it where it's like publicity for her. But then the other half is just, I legitimately think she's just evil. Yeah, she's just an evil being that like yeah. craves putting Will she's in like his a, place. She's like a Dementor who feeds off of Will Smith's happiness. She she genuinely looks like a supervillain. Like she always wears this like really eccentric purple outfit, and and she, she just looks like a supervillain. Someone I would see in like a really scary movie. <laughs> Wikipedia just says she's a talk show host. It's also amazing now that like is. all four of us here are like, what the fuck does this woman even do? Who is she? And then apparently she's uh one of the one hundred most influential people in the world, twenty twenty one, according to yeah, Times people Magazine. People Doing love what? tuning in to hear hear a shit on Will. <laughs> That's the only reason. <laughs> She's got the most preeminent shitting on Will Smith podcast. Influence of all time. doesn't always mean positive influence, you know. It could yeah, be true. a negative influence. True. In fact, I would I would argue that like ninety percent of influences have a negative impact on the people they're influencing. <laughs> this is wild. Oh well, yeah. So don't be a bitch like Will. What a downfall. What a sad legacy to leave behind.
If Will Smith was sitting here in this podcast with us, what would your advice to Will Smith be? It'd be so simple. It, it would actually just be move on. Okay. Like, please <laughs> get over her. Find someone else. Do something else. Absolutely. Seriously. It's like really simple. Did you guys see the news that he could have got with Margot Robbie? Yeah. Well, there's still rumors that he did get with Margot Robbie, but I I don't know if I believe those. He seems yeah. way too much like dedicated attached at the hip to his wife. Yeah. And I think he's too late now. I think Margot Robbie's um she's got a husband or something now, so he missed his shot with that, but there'll be someone else will. That's my advice. Uh you, you can only go up, really, from here. <laughs> this is your rock bottom, I'm afraid. But it'll get better. This is such a hilarious contrast. So, like, usually when you hear about this kind of relationship, you know, a guy stuck in an unhappy marriage, he gets trampled on, he's just a pussy-whipped sad sack. It's like, it's not the world-famous Hollywood megastar multimillionaire yeah, who has ripped options. man <laughs> that millions of other women are vying for. And somehow this woman just buck broke this man into complete subservience and slavery. Yeah. Amazing. Like emotional slavery. Just, you're my bitch. She really is a Dementor. <laughs> uh, I just, every time I see a picture of him smiling, I can just, I can really see the pain behind the, the, uh, the eyes and stuff. <laughs> he, he looks like he's really forcing the smile. Oh yeah, no. There, there's just the, he looks like that Warjack meme where he has the happy mask, but behind it yeah. is just tears, yeah. right? Yeah. Even if mm -hmm. he was happy smiling, I bet you would hear the Jaws team as like Jada approaches him to suck the soul out. <laughs> and like make him wilt. <laughs> Maybe that's how she stays young. Who knows? Yes. Yeah, yeah. She probably she probably does like steal his blood in the middle of the night. Hooks him up to one of those <laughs> blood boy machines. Yeah. <laughs> He always wakes up in the in the morning with like two bike marks on his neck. <laughs> Jada, I love you. <laughs> He'd probably just uh, give her his blood if she asked. He probably oh, does actively. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He would kill himself for her, clearly. And sh she would again say like she wouldn't even speak at his funeral. I bet. <laughs> yeah. <no. laughs> she she'd she'd be hosting a fucking talk show while the funeral's going on, trying to divert attention away from it. Processing my husband's suicide, a five-part book series. <laughs> what, do you, what do you mean, husband? <laughs> Pro processing my uh, former entanglement's suicide. Yeah. yeah, she spends the entire episode talking about how they what, they didn't actually like know each other, not actually in a in a marriage or anything, as we would understand it. Who do you guys Who do you guys think is the most pathetic individual in Hollywood? James Corden. I mean, that's super easy. He made that way too simple. James Corden doesn't do shit though. He's a, mm. he's like he owns his fucking. I think you need to be like Will. You need to like be able to like I don't know bury it somehow. It, but, it, James Corden, I feel, is too confident to be pathetic. I dis I just disagree. What's your criteria though? Because you have like washed up celebrities, drug addicted celebrities. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think those count. I think those definitely count. And you can make a good argument for some of those definitely being pathetic, like clinging on to whatever they have left, trying to make something work, even though their time is up. I would think that's pathetic. Who was that guy that was like on the ground in his kitchen eating burgers, completely David fucked Hasselhoff. up on drugs? Yeah, David Hasselhoff. That was yeah, me after daughter. drinking in Pittsburgh, by the way. I had a bowl <laughs> of mac and cheese on a hotel fucking floor, just eating it, desperately trying to come to life. <laughs> I thought you said you didn't have a hangover or something. It was fucking awful. No, David Hasselhoff was blasted for that video. That was ages ago. Yeah, it was, but I think that was like one of his lowest points or so, the lowest point of any Hollywood celebrity, I guess. Didn't his daughter film it too, as a wake-up call? Uh, I believe she's talking to him in the video, yeah. Yeah. And then she that released it to the public. Why do, why do yeah. all these Hollywood families hate each other? <laughs> that one I can like kind of understand. If, he, if he's not getting any better, you're desperate to try anything. So you'd try shaming him in public into getting better, I guess. Yeah, that, I think that was her excuse at the time. Not excuse, but reasoning was, I, I am so desperate that all I can do now is film him, humiliate him, and then show him, like, this yeah. is what you look like when you do this shit. 
and I come home and you're on the fucking floor. Don't they say like shame is n- not a useful tool when fighting addiction though? Because you, you spiral? Bullshit. Yeah, they also you- hand out needles and say, go ahead, champ. <laughs> I don't listen to those people. Those people are fucking retarded. I don't think they're the same people. They are. Okay, we go to the but bottom I don't of know. that. Asking for the like most pathetic person in Hollywood, that's so hard. Yeah, I know. It is. For me, it was easy. I still think James Corden. He just makes bad shit. He's not, it's not, that's not pathetic. Yeah, but like this shit is so bad that it makes him pathetic. And he is an absolute plague to everything he touches. He's got the cheese touch. Mm-hmm. Andrew, you got anyone? I'm really struggling. Um, I only have meta answers. Like the most pathetic person in Hollywood is a background extra who thinks that that one move has made their entire career and they're going to be a huge star. All right, you've got concepts. You're you're thinking higher than us. I can't think of. Mm -hmm. I I can't think of anyone specific. I just keep thinking of like attitudes in Hollywood that you see all the time that make people pathetic. Mm. Oh, someone in chat had a good one. Seth Rogen. I agree with that one. That's that's a good. Seth Rogen's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't. Probably not the most pathetic, but he is definitely pathetic. Yeah. He's up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. His opinions are dog shit. All right, you guys got anything else? What's that? What else has been happening? Well, the, hang on. Not about Will Smith. It, instead of talking about the most pathetic person in Hollywood, can we talk about the most useful VPN on the internet? Oh, 100% mm-hmm. we can. You're pathetic if you don't use it. Exactly. Thank you. That is exactly where I was going with that. Because where I'm going with ExpressVPN is any country I feel like. Because <laughs> the did. internet has decided... It's just decided that people don't want to watch things, I guess, thanks to licensing and copyrights and all of this incredibly convoluted and stupid procedures that haven't been updated in God knows how many years. You are paying for a subscription service that does not give you even a fraction of what it has to offer. If you sign up for, let's say, Netflix or Hulu or YouTube Premium, or any of those services, there's a good chance that there's going to be content on there that is going to be blocked in your region. And you're going to say, well, I pay for the service, and that should mean that I pay for the content they own. Nope. Well, just because of one piece of the chain failing, you do not get to watch whatever show you have in mind. But you can circumvent this really dumb, outdated law. By using ExpressVPN to change your location. If you want far more Korean dramas, set your location to South Korea. If you want to maybe check out some soap operas or telenovelas, I bet a country in South America is going to get a lot of access to those compared to North America. If you want to, I think a big one was check out Lord of the Rings. That's available in Australia. You can jump around and see what they've got. You like anime? I'll bet you Japan maybe has a few extra series that you're not going to get on American Netflix. Play with it. Experiment a bit. But while you're doing that, also keep in mind that ExpressVPN will be ridiculously fast. There will be no buffer or lag, and you can stream in HD with no problem whatsoever. Works on your phone, works on your console, works on your smart TV, works on your anything and also secures your internet browsing data at the same time if you want to get access to hundreds of new shows you can use the link right now expressvpn.com slash official it will get you extra uh, extra three months of expressvpn for free that's expressvpn.com slash official e-x-p-r-e-s-s vpn.com slash official to learn more and get an extra three months for free So let's imagine that you've picked out your show. You've signed up for ExpressVPN. Mm -hmm. You're sitting on the couch and you say, yes, this show is the one I'm going to watch. Well, what's going to happen? What always happens when you finally pick out a show that you need to watch? You're going to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, hang on. There doesn't seem to be a dildo inside of me right now. (laughs) This is a huge problem. I've made a huge mistake. I forgot to also go to adamandeve.com. Charlie, would you care to tell us what adamandeve.com is? It's a one-stop shop for every sex toy you could ever dream of. 
literally ever dream of pretty much so don't be watching your shows without one correct i don't know why we don't do everything without one like why if the business environment if the working environment in the office is all adults all consenting adults why don't we just like you know how in the break room you could have a granola bar free coffee throw some dildos in there make people feel nice get those reports done with a smile on your face you must be working at Activision. Yeah. <laughs> oh boy, dream. that's that's your dream job. Yeah, yeah. Don't, yeah. <laughs> just don't put your breast milk in the fridge. But get <laughs> yourself milked, wink, using Adam and Eve, <laughs> or get anything really. They have any conceivable feel good object on the entire planet. And if you use code Defense, very specific with Adam and Eve. They have their own little code. You will get 50% off of any item. Holy shit. With free shipping in the U.S. and Canada with some exclusions that will apply. If you want to make yourself feel good and pretty much make your whole life better, you can kind of do it when doing anything else, really. If you're creative, go to adamandeve.com. Use code DEFENSE for 50% off any one item with some exclusions to end free shipping in the U.S., and Canada. AdamandEve.com. Code DEFENSE. Keep that in mind. It's not official. It's code DEFENSE for this one. Yeah. They say don't make any important decisions before masturbating. Because your mm -hmm. mind is clearer after the fact. So keep that mm -hmm. in mind. You're going to be doing a lot of masturbating in your adult life. Yes. Not for pleasure or anything. Just so that you make the right decisions in life. So Yeah. Before this podcast, I make sure you get that out there. You have to. No. Yeah. And then after the yeah. podcast to start my day. Yeah. Yeah. Before yes. taking out a loan, the big decisions. That's right. I'm yeah, at the it, bank. It I gets have to use the bathroom. The bank. I'm gone yeah. for 30 minutes. It gets awkward, but what are they going to do? They need your money. Another person who should have jerked off before making his decision, by the way, is that guy who defected into North Korea. Have you guys heard about this follow-up? <laughs> yeah, uh, it's so fucking stupid. I don't know how this took this turn of events. You want to you wanna tell everyone what happened, Kaya? Yeah, North Korea said, we don't want this guy. Take him back. They, did, they didn't even want him as a fucking prisoner or a <laughs> yeah. bargaining chip. They immediately handed him back. And the US detained him and charged him with desertion. Understandable. And possessing sense. child porn, which kind of just came out of nowhere for no oh, fucking yeah. reason. Oh, so no. that's why he fucking defected, I'm assuming. He's like, oh shit, they're, they're after me. They've figured out I have child porn. Better flee to North Korea, the only place I'm safe. Yeah, did you think North Korea was, you know, like a pedo-utopia? I'll be welcome here. These are my people. No, he just he didn't think that they would, like, extradite him back. But wait, that doesn't mean it really, it doesn't really track either, though, because he's going to be a prison in, prisoner in North Korea. Regardless, so what's the, that's worse than being a prisoner in America, I would assume. Mm -hmm, you don't know. Plus, they probably wouldn't have known about all the porn on his phone. I guess maybe. Well, I no, know. I'm not saying the North Koreans are putting him in jail for child pornography charges. I'm saying they're like detaining him because he's an American fleeing into the country. Like that, that would probably like yeah. Wasn't he, would have he was military, face, wasn't he? He was mil wasn't yeah. he military? Yeah, so he they yes, would have he was like, military and he loudly him. yelled ha 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 as he ran across the border, presumably <laughs> just <laughs> and the joy that he was finally free of the, the euphoria child porn charges. Yeah, yeah. This, this, this super villain fleeing with his child pornography. I bet the North Koreans don't even have a sex offender registry. I'll be free. <laughs> <laughs> You know what the North Koreans do have, though, that I found funny this week is um, they apparently have a very lucrative IT sector now. So as you guys know, okay, I wonder if you guys can guess where this is going, but the pandemic happens and globally we realized, oh, a lot of the shit we do at the company, we kind of can do remotely while sitting mm -hmm. at home, cozy, sipping cocoa in my moo moo, right? And then we yeah. realized... Oh, you know, this This isn't all upsides. Like, sometimes I get bummed out because I have no human contact anymore. But one of the downsides that I guess no one saw coming is that uh, remote workers now fund North Korea's nuclear program. According to the FBI, North Korea has been funneling its IT workers into the remote working sector and then taking all of their wages to fund their nuclear programs. That's interesting. 
it is funny because apparently they've been basically bribing U.S. citizens to use their Wi-Fi connections and they've been using forged documents to pretend that they're U.S. citizens and then applying for remote IT positions. Like, I'm going to be a programmer for your company. And then whatever six figures they would make would immediately go into Kim's pockets. So imagine just being this North Korean IT wa wagey. And I guess they also live abroad. I'm not sure if they have connections in North Korea. Or internet connections, at least. Have you guys seen the video of, I think it was during the Olympics, all of the North Korean like cheerleaders in the in the stalls cheering on the North Korean team? And they are like the most brainwashed individual. Yeah, what? what? Oh. Like chanting and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like they they they've got like a handler there, like handlers like shuffling them around the stadium. They're not allowed out of their sight basically because these people like these cheerleaders are like the only North Koreans that have probably ever been outside of the country for like normal people. Mm -hmm. So they're like kept on a tight leash and stuff. And it it's scary. They all like look and act the same. They they they're like in perfect harmony and then they're just shuffled around by a group of suited individuals it was it, it looks scary this was like four years that's ago that's a brainwashing that's literally just you will cheer as hard as you can and the first person to stop clapping has their entire family lynched when we get back yeah, yeah. you're, you're not you're allowed to works. show um <laughs> wavering in the face of the regime so if any of them were like half-assing it they could be like oh you weren't doing your duty we're gonna punish you now. Uh huh. Get fucked. They didn't even get to enjoy the Olympics, though. No, That's they're not allowed sucks. to. No. <laughs> they're not there to enjoy the Olympics. Enjoying the Olympics means consuming capitalist propaganda. It means consuming Western ideals. You're allowed to observe it and watch it, but you're not allowed to enjoy it. Why does North Korea even participate? To show the strength of North Korea and how good they are. Are they? No, of course not, but they like to pretend they are. But they can't lie about the results. Those cheerleaders, oh, no, they, know, they saw Oh, it. no, they can't. They can go to the Olympics. They can do whatever the fuck they want. And in the rest of the world, they'll go, and North Korea got 73rd place. But in North Korea, they'll go, a wonder is showing by our incredible athletes who are world class and competed with the strongest of the strong. They, and they'll probably just say they won gold in like six categories. Yeah, but then the, the, the cheerleaders know what happens to them. If they say anything, they get killed. <laughs> it's that simple. No, probably. One of my favorite little things from North Korea was a propaganda video that the government released where they were using footage from Olympus Has Fallen to brag about <laughs> how they just nuked the White House or something. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, they have, they have murals at like carnivals and shit where it's just a U.S. soldier eating a baby. And they're like, that's what Americans are like. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> I've seen you eat babies before. I, I read a book called The Girl with Seven Names. I've mentioned it on the show. It's it's excellent. It's about a woman who flees North Korea through China. And um, she talks about how in elementary school, one of the paintings on her school wall was just a U.S. soldier with a bayonet stabbing a North Korean. And the text was like, be careful. Americans will kill you. It's just a thing, little child. It happens I mean, all the it, time. That, it does happen all the time. That is correct. Yeah, happens You'd every every second of every day. Do you think? Do you think she was disappointed? Do you think she was disappointed when she finally did get to America and no one was eating babies? <laughs> I think she felt safe for the first Aww. time in her life. No, she's like, I went out. I went out of my way to flee this country to eat some babies, and they don't even uh -oh. eat babies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> where are Please. where are the babies being eaten? Come on. Yeah. She goes Come to the on, orphanage. Guys. One, please. Uh, medium rare. <laughs> she sits at a table with a little apron on and puts it on. <laughs> like, one baby, please. If we want to talk about country cultural brainwashing in North Korea, one of my favorite incidents ever is the WWE or WWF back then goes to North Korea and tries to put on a wrestling show. You guys know about this story? Vaguely. No. I... I watched something on it and i can't remember exactly how it all played out yeah so rough details probably wrong but basically vince mcmahon teamed up with a very famous asian wrestler um hang on i want to see if i can find his name hideo kojima uh here it is the collision in korea okay so the event was called the collision in korea and it happened in 1995 and it was with 
Oh, uh, God, it's a really famous guy in Asia, and he's Antonio Inoki. That's him. Antonio Inoki. So Antonio Inoki, very famous Asian actor in all of Asia. He's Japanese, but like all of Asia knows him and loves him. Uh, he's like a wrestler and an actor and like a figurehead and all that. He's basically like the rock of his day. Um, so he comes up to the WWF and he's like, hey, let's do something for North Korea. It'll it'll be a a good idea. It'll be cultural coming together. It'll be, you know, brokering of peace, a fun little event. Yeah. We'll do wrestling. So you send up your best guy, who at the time was Ric Flair, and I'll fight him. And we'll have like this big cool match and like, you know, I'll triumph because I'm the star over there, but it'll make you guys look good and you'll put on a fun show and, you know, bro broker some peace with North Korea. And they're like, okay, that sounds good. So they go to North Korea and there's like all these shenanigans that happen. It's a very funny story. But basically every single time a match goes on before them, because they have undercards, they have other matches, the crowd is dead silent, dead fucking silent. Everyone there is like formally dressed like they're going to the <laughs> opera and they're watching with complete and utter silence. And they, the wrestlers are like doing big high flying moves and like screaming and trying to get the crowd pumped and playing their characters. And the crowd, you can Stone hear a face. pin drop. Nothing. Absolutely That's gonna nothing. That's going to be so fucking weird to put on that performance as the wrestlers to just a, yeah. room, a room full of silence. Depressing. And so, and so nothing is working. They're trying all these moves, all these tactics, all these everything. Like, oh, I'm the hero, I'm the villain. Nothing whatsoever. And all that happens, I believe, is polite clapping every now and then because they're told to clap. And finally, the final match occurs between Antonio Inoki and Ric Flair. And as soon as Antonio goes out, the crowd goes, oh my God, is that Antonio Inoki? Holy shit, that guy's amazing. I love him. And what they think is happening is it's Antonio Inoki versus the United States. <laughs> so all of the sudden, they start cheering him on and going ballistic because they think he's taking down this American production. He was. <laughs> And, and and the whole time, every time he does anything, they go wild. And anytime anyone hits him, they start booing like crazy. Mm. Well, I mean, that's still a really cool response, though. Yeah, that is. They finally got some passion out of the crowd. Yeah, they finally. But the, the whole point is they did not until that point at all understand what they were watching in any capacity. So it needed to be framed in the concept of North Korea or Asia versus America. So I, what I believe, what I believe drew them to him is he like helped during the Korean War or helped broker peace or was a figurehead. He did something that North Korea liked in the past, so they had a reason to root for him. So as soon as it came out, they were like, "Yeah, go, Antonio, fuck up those Americans, yeah, kill them." All that tells me is that. Kim Jong Un likes that guy. Very as a possible. Wrestler. Probably yeah. cheers him on on the TV, and he taught all the rest of the country. Well, keep in mind this died. was '95, so this would have been <laughs> Kim Jong Il or Kim Il Sung. Yeah. Oh, sorry, his dad. Yeah, did. yeah. <laughs> but it was it was just this incredibly awkward affair until that point. Oh no! Wait, you said 1995, right? Yeah, 95. Well, Kim Jong Un would have been 13. Wait. Oh, he would have been way into wrestling then. then. Yeah, yeah, he oh, would have yeah. been like 13. So maybe his dad just saw the, you know, glimmer in his kid's eye. Like, oh, he really likes Antonio. Okay, well, mm. I'm going to whip my whole country. <laughs> Until they cheer. <laughs> you think this guy cared about his son at all? Well, if we're yeah, talking on that, I would um, imagine so. Kim Jong-il did have a huge love of basketball. That's why he and Dennis Rodman became really weird friends. Kim Jong-un <laughs> has a huge love of basketball. I could also yeah, imagine that, yeah. Un. Yeah, it's, mm. it's Kim Jong-un. He loves basketball. No, it's both. Kim Jong-il erected an oh. entire museum to basketball dedicated to Michael Jordan in the country. <laughs> oh, he, he's also the one who instituted North Korean basketball <laughs> rules. Okay. This entire family is just playing, like, Animal Crossing with a country, yes. basically. Like, I'm gonna put a fucking... I like this thing. Here's my Doom Museum, and I'm gonna play Mario Wonder, so that yes. everybody now has to wear mushroom caps. <laughs> you now know why I like North Korea. Kim Jong Un um, was fascinated with Swiss cheese, and I believe it's because he went to boarding school in Switzerland. So when yeah, he took was. over, 
one of his first orders was to kidnap three Swiss chefs to make him cheese. <laughs> that's that's the solution. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I think they're still they'll, there today. They'll get a fucking cookbook. Wait, <laughs> they didn't try to get these chefs back or anything. What are they gonna do? <laughs> Cause an international are they incident? Well paid? I don't know. Trade like Pro- two- I don't know. It depends. Trade two pastry chefs or something instead, and just keep doing that. I do know <laughs> that one person who's well paid in North Korea is he is the owner of the only pizza shop in all of North Korea. They have one, and he owns it and knows how to make pizza. And he apparently was a chef. And Kim Jong Un or Il, one of them, said, "Go learn how to make pizza. I want pizza." So he went overseas learned how to make pizza, and then came back and owns the only pizza restaurant in North Korea. And that's why he's paid so well, because he's like the only guy in the country who can do it authentically. Was it Papa John? (laughs) It's just Papa John. He fled. (laughs) 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 He said too many bad words and went to North Korea. (laughs) He was a North Korean plant. (laughs) So is North Korea just a country of criminals then? They all do something bad in their home country and go, well, North Korea will accept me. It's fine. <laughs> they probably will. At that, so just kidnap Gordon Ramsay then. At that point, right? So just get the master of it all. Yeah, that'd be actually awesome. If Nor- if Gordon Ramsay w- had to make all of Kitchen Nightmares and shit from North Korea, the things he'd talk about. <laughs> oh my god, the cont- <laughs> the losers just get shot. Uh, real high stakes this time. <laughs> I want to see an episode of Cake Boss where instead of destroying the cake, they shoot you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah cooking needs some steaks oh i love that yeah, yeah. what a goofy ass country like how uh, what, what's the most prominent person north korea has ever kidnapped and did it spark a diplomatic the um south korean godzilla movie directors i was just right, about yeah. to say that yeah. actually That's such a fascinating story. It is. There's a lot to talk about with it, but basically uh, Kim Jong-un was like, Godzilla's a really good movie. Wow. Guys, have you seen Godzilla? And related fact to that, Kim Jong-un is also a huge movie buff. He wrote an entire book called like The Director's Vision, and it's just his advice on how to make a movie. Um, but anyway, <laughs> he was like, Godzilla is a great movie. Have you guys seen this movie? And all his subordinates were like, yes, we love this movie. And he's like, North Korea can make Godzilla, but we don't have a good enough director. Hey, 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 those two guys in South Korea, that, that husband and wife, that directing duo, they should direct it. And at first I think he approached them and was like, Hey, come to North Korea and make this movie. And they were like, no. And then later that night they were just kidnapped from their hotel room and forced over the border. That is awesome. <laughs> God, I kind of see the appeal of, like, I'm starting to see Kim's side of the story. I think he's been maligned by the media because of all the starvation in his country and whatnot. But if I had the power to just snap my fingers and kidnap George Miller and make, like, Mad Max Fury Road, but Max is Kaya now, official title, (laughs) 2025... I would. <laughs> but wait, wouldn't you be worried, Kaya, as as a fan of the movies, wouldn't you be worried that now George Miller phones it in because his heart's not really in it? He just wants to no, please no, you? I'll kidnap it's his not family as too. I'll put he his heart wants in it. to Don't make worry. the next one. It's just the studios <laughs> that are fucking with him and not paying him, right? Wasn't that the thing? Yeah, it's know. a big uh, studio dispute, but the, yeah. he does want to make it from what I remember. Yeah. <laughs> also, yeah. Um, in, that, in that director's story, they recorded Kim Jong-un secretly while having meetings with him about the movie. And according to them and the recordings, he is just a completely different person when he's not on camera or making a speech. Like, he'll make a speech and like look very stoic and powerful. And then behind the scenes, he's like, hey, you guys want a beer? Like, what's going on? Hey, how you doing? It's good to see you. Wait, who- who are you talking about? Kim Jong-un. Oh, so uh, do you think he's like a super chill dude to hang out with? <laughs> he's apparently super chill when you hang out with him. He's just like, oh, yeah, you know, I own North Korea. Anyway, can you put an explosion in the movie? Those are rad. Those are the coolest thing ever. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. He sounds like yeah. a bro. <laughs> yeah. So maybe <laughs> maybe it's the military generals that are the issue in North Korea. Maybe they're the ones like killing people and stuff. Maybe Kim Jong-un's like a total bro. It's the chain of violence. So Kim Jong-un goes, hey, do this or I'll have you shot. And then the general goes to the next guy and says, hey, do this and I'll have you shot. And then et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It just keeps going down, you know? Well, yeah, but I was arguing like maybe maybe Kim doesn't want people shot or doesn't even know oh, people he does. Are getting What do you shot? mean? He loves that shit. He does. Okay. When there's rumors yeah. that he blew his uncle up with an anti-aircraft gun, 
Yeah, he, he likes it. He had his brother assassinated using two girls who thought they were on a reality TV show doing yep. a prank to him. Was that the one in the airport with the poison? Yeah. 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 That's so fucking funny. Yeah. Yeah, that story is also funny where he knows he's so paranoid that and he's correct, but he's so paranoid. As soon as it happens, he runs up to a cop and goes, I've been poisoned. I've been poisoned. <laughs> he knew immediately. Yeah. Yeah. North Korea is great. There's just it's just a never ending treasure trove of deep lore. Who who would you guys kidnap to make a video game or movie? Hmm. Good question. So my my again, my issue is I just don't think that they their output would be any good if they're doing it under duress. What if you mm. kidnapped them but still paid them? Like a lot. Yeah, made them happy. Yeah. You just commission them at that point, kind yeah, of. Yeah, that's just a commission. No, but they're still your captives, and they're still technically... Well, what benefit is like, there in their being a captive if I'm paying them? Well, not paying, but you would provide them with luxuries. For yeah, instance. it means they can't say no. If they if they show up, and they're like, no, I'm not making your movie, they can walk on the door, but if you say, hey, look, you are forced to make this, but I'll I'll give you a bath, I'll feed you. I'll, I'll compliment whatever you make. Yeah. Look, George Miller, you'll get a whole harem of women, just like in your movie, if you make the movie. I thought you were going to say, I'll get, a, I'll give you a whole herring. <laughs> like, you just give them a nice fish. <laughs> Whatever my North Korean country can provide, sir. <laughs> <A> toothbrush. <laughs> Ooh, I would kidnap Yandere Dev. That would be fucking funny. Watch him work And force him duress. to stop. <laughs> I don't know if he can stop. Yeah, really. Has there been any updates with the Andere Dev? No. Uh, not that nothing I've, I've seen. I haven't kept up. I feel like I feel like it would have been news if he did something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm looking forward to his next video. I hope he addresses it. There was an update with the Sniper Wolf situation in case anyone cared about that. Um, she made an apology from what I saw. I didn't read it though. And YouTube also demonetized uh i temporarily, think as yeah punishment do we know how temporarily no so it could it's yeah uh, a week no clue if it's an oh, actual yeah she hired a pr or agency or she copy pasted something that her youtube manager told her to write because somebody this dumb cannot write this tweet but yeah she she apologized and said it was inexcusable and i'm so sorry and i got a slap on the wrist and now i have to be on my best behavior yada yada so has it blown over? Is is everything solved now, or do people still care? I mean, people still care. Obviously, it hasn't blown over. It's been like two days, Jackson. That's pretty long in internet time. No, uh, yeah, sure but, but then, this is like a crime. Isn't it always almost been two weeks? That's usually the bare maximum of people's attention span. Next week, they won't even remember. You'll be like, "Hey, yeah. remember when Sniper Wolf yada yada?" And they'll go, "Who? What? That never <laughs> happened." This realistically means nothing. In in a week or two, it's everything's going to go back to normal. Like if you look at her channel, her view counts are not affected. Yeah, her comment section yeah. is complaining, but how long is that realistically going to keep up? What do you mean? Her view count is affected. What are you talking about? Uh, all right, I'm looking at her videos, and they still get a million views in a day. There used to be a lot more before all of this. She used to be like 1.5 to 2 mil a day on that. I'm looking at three, four weeks ago. It's the same thing. Who's out there watching Sniper Wolf? And yeah, that, out of those yeah. people, who's out there like, oh no, she did this thing? How horrible. I must protest her. Yeah, I, I wouldn't have care. expected that much overlap. It, it's mostly kids. It's There's not a lot of overlap, but there definitely is still some. And I do think it is noticeable. Hmm. I'm not, I'm not going to weigh in. I don't know. I haven't looked at the numbers. And I don't care. The numbers. Yeah, me neither. Um, good on no one, I guess. I don't think anyone wins. <laughs> yeah, no one wins. Realistically, I don't think anything is going to like change in the long term with her. She's still going to make her shitty content and she's still going to make millions from it. So I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what, what there this is. This is going to, in a month, people won't even remember this happened at all. No, not at all. And by the time a month has passed, YouTube will have quietly enabled her monetization again. Yeah, yeah. Well, they, they could enable it right away, right? And no one would know. I mean, they would know True. you'd get ads. Oh, right. I thought, you, I thought they still serve ads. They just don't give the money to the person. 
That's what no, that's what they stop serving ads. But even then, her monetization's off. Okay, damn, she doesn't get paid for let's say a month. She still gets views. She still gets growth. She still gets traffic. She still gets every positive part of that. Mm hmm. Can we talk about something positive? Are you guys playing Super Mario Wonder yet? Yes. Yes. I haven't started yet, but I'm excited to. It's excellent. Fanta Nintendo so just does good. not miss. It's so good for all of those of you wondering how the hell Nintendo still gets away with like selling a console that's a decade old. This is how. Yeah. They make such good games that you just feel compelled it's to It's such play a shame because I fucking hate that company. <laughs> it makes me so upset. I know. I know. It's not the company. Uh, we were just... trying to be positive, goddammit. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> Apparently, I don't know how I'm true sad this is, again. but like five people worked on the original Super Mario Brothers from like the 80s, and then four of them worked for Mario Wonder. So like this company, once they have good talents, they just do not let them go. Yeah, I think I that's the main key. It's well. just retention, yeah. Well, I think it's also a just a thing in J Japan, right? Like usually people stay with the yeah. companies they're with for a long time. Mm -hmm. They feel like... Company loyalty in Japan is a very, very strong cultural stigma. Yeah, like you're meant to stick. But you only it with get them. that if the company is loyal back to you. So these guys must be treated well. And apparently, you know, in the West, every single time we hear about fucking crunch, I went on Wikipedia to see what the reception was of this game. And one of the first things that I saw was that um, the development team was not given a deadline to produce a prototype. You know how big of a deal that is to just be told yeah. by a company? Yeah, I mean, yeah hypothetically you can go as long as you want it would be nice if you don't take you know 20 years but go nuts there's a reason would, that metroid yeah. prime 4 is still not out and there's a reason bayonetta 3 got delayed thousands of times it's because and it's one thing nintendo does very well they typically don't release games until they're ready well they don't release games that are bad as well i'm i'm assuming that metroid hasn't released because it's just it's it's not working. And, it's but not that's good. fine. I would much rather they oh, not yeah, release absolutely. that. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. No, Instead absolutely. of putting it out like most big game devs and then going, oh, we have a big patch coming to fix everything. Like the classic example. Well, that's is what Cyberpunk. they did with Pokemon. Let's uh, let's stop sucking their meat too hard. They they did but release Pokemon. They don't Pokemon develop Pokemon. Violet. They don't make Pokemon, but Pokemon uh Game Freak does. It's still a Nintendo property though. They still own the There is a difference between publishing and developing. Look at Bethesda. They don't make Doom, they publish it. I mean, yeah, that's true, but still, it is still a yeah. Nintendo I mean, by that, yeah, property. They are not... Yeah, they're yeah. Not and it, like, you could say the same thing for, like, Metroid. That's still not fully Nintendo developing that. Is that retro? Isn't it? Mm-hmm. Isn't, it, isn't it retro owned by Nintendo, though? And, and so is Pokemon. That's the point I'm making. Yeah, I suppose. I thought retro yeah. was... on, But, I mean, like, I thought retro was under the umbrella of Nintendo, whereas Game Freak's its own separate company. No, I mean, Retro is also still its own separate company. If it wasn't, it wouldn't be called Retro. Yeah, yeah I but, suppose. I Yeah, they do have the occasional stinker, but I think their track record is way, way more consistent than big studios. No, no, I agree. Yeah, I, I do agree. It's just like, yeah. it's, it's not like they've never done it. No, of course not. No, but when the, tra when the current cultural idea is that AAA games release unfinished and broken... Nintendo, I think, is a different standard. To them, I, I normally expect a Nintendo game to release finished and working. Yeah, you know? yeah. I think I think it definitely comes down to audience retention. Uh, the sorry, not audience retention, talent retention. The people making the games, like Kai yeah. said, as well as just targeted hardware optimization. Especially, they know the hardware. Yeah, they know their right. they're hardware. developing for a, a really big it. thing that Nintendo also does. Whether you want to count it or not, is they aren't afraid to take risks. Like they do innovate, and it doesn't always work. I mean, the Wii, the fucking Switch, could be in that thing. It goes back and forth between desktop and regular. Blah blah blah. Mario Wonder does the same thing. The Wonder Seeds changed the level entirely so the developers when making the game basically had to say hey we have to make two levels in one for every single level in the game but that's twice the level of content we don't have the pipeline for it jesus christ <laughs> so much fun like, like for those who haven't yeah. played it yet the the thing in this game is that every almost every level i would say has this thing called a wonder flower that just switches yeah. 
the level entirely midway through the level. Right. And it gets so much fun to collect those things to the point where like you'll be playing the game and you'll tell your buddy, uh, we have to go back. We missed a wonder flower. Like we didn't actually beat the level. This doesn't count. And that's the thing. You can still beat the level without it. You can play a regular Mario level or you can get the Wonder Flower and play like mm-hmm. a gimmicked Mario level. And that's the whole point of Mario Wonder. It's to go, here's the gimmick. Here's the thing it does. Tons and tons of developers don't have that these days. They they take so on a sequel content. or a property and they go, oh, we'll just make this again. Oh, and the new, the new, uh, let's take Halo Reach. Oh, the big gimmick this time is you have a grappling hook. That's Halo Infinite, but yeah. yeah, yeah. I said Infinite. Oh, did I say Reach? You mm-hmm. said Reach. Yeah, Infinite. No, the and whole thing game- was, okay, it's open world and you have a grappling hook. And you think, well, what are you going to do with it? Uh, largely nothing. Okay, great. Good job. I think I think that is what makes Nintendo games so good. Like, they are just... They're just games. They're just upfront games. They don't make any, like, caveats or, or compromises. They just put the entertainment in front of you and let you go wild. They maximize for fun. That's it. They're yeah. just so yeah. much yeah. fun to play, regardless of how they look. If you look at this game, like speaking of risk, look at every Western developer and what do they the prime bragging points is always the 4K fucking ray tracing. We're gonna have this, we're gonna have that. Yeah. And then you look at Nintendo, it doesn't have any of it. We're playing at like 1080p or whatever, but the game looks gorgeous to me. Yes. And I'm playing it on a 72-inch OLED TV, by the way. So it's not like stretched as far as the eye can see. And I don't give a shit. It's just so much fun. I don't care that it's not ray traced or whatever. It's so much fun. Like the art style itself is so good. Let's take another perfect example. F-099. That is the first F-0 game in like 15 years. Is it a true new sequel? No. Is it like super flashy and modern? Not really. But they took F-0. They implemented a modern gameplay mechanic. And they just made it work. It runs perfectly. And it's incredible. It is a really, really good and fun racing game. And all they did was say, what if we made F-Zero a Battle Royale? They didn't make new graphics for it. Obviously, they updated it to HD and polished it up. But it's the original sprites. It's the original music. All the work was already there. But they still made an incredibly great game. And that's all they had to do. They just had to take an interesting concept and execute it. As opposed to other companies. Let's say fucking... Microsoft or or Sony or whatever wants to make a new racing game of theirs, they'll go, okay, for the next Forza, uh, we added this line of Better cars. Reflections. Yeah, we yeah, added literally. we added a track where now you can drift and that's it's Look one at the track rain in the physics. game. Look yeah, at the rain like, liquid droplet particles on exa- the windshield. And it's like who gives a shit? How much does that really change the game? <laughs> That was literally that was literally the most recent Forza Motorsports that just released. Their entire marketing up to the point was how much you know how much more integrated ray tracing is. Like it was just yeah, ray tracing. It, it ray goes tracing, it tracing. goes both ways in the problem as well. Um, I believe there's a quote from Shigeru Miyamoto where he said, "We haven't made a new Star Fox since Zero because we don't know what to do new with it." Well, has he tried implementing ray tracing? I mean, yeah, do ray, do ray tracing. This is your wake-up oh, call. Switch would fucking explode if he even <laughs> thought about ray tracing. But as as someone who grew up with Star Fox, I've, I've wanted a new game. I fucking love 64. I've played it 30 fucking times. I would love if they just did, hey, it's a modern new Star Fox 64. That's fine, but they haven't yet because they keep saying, well, we don't know what to do new. We don't know how to change it. You know what I mean? It's a double-edged sword. Yeah. But it, it leads to very innovative and fun games instead of just, oh, we made the same game again, but it's slightly un- prettier. Yeah, but ev- I even understand the place for like Forza where, okay, this is just your your gimmick. This is your gimmick is realism and realistic graphics. Yeah. You know, yeah. They're, the people do care about that. My point was simply when I'm actually sitting down and playing these fucking ain't on an ancient console playing Mario Wonder, I don't all of that flies out the window for me. Yeah, because this yeah. is just so much goddamn fucking fun that I don't care that I'm playing in 1080p right now. I don't even notice it because yeah. the art style itself is so beautiful. The, the gameplay is fun. They have so many mechanics, so many enemies. The, the soundtrack Switch, is also the best Mario soundtrack I've it heard. Is, like it is. It sounds way better. It's the perfect blend of uh, remixes of old ones and new songs. Um, and again, they integrate even that where I don't know if you guys have that perk or badge unlocked yet where if you jump in rhythm with the music you get extra coins and this works yeah. in every level <laughs> that sounds it's amazing so cool. holy shit <laughs> 
But like, but I meant like even the instrument samples sound like way better. Like, yeah, it, the quality of the music just sounds. It, it's a very like a good sounding game. Even the flower that for some reason talks to you throughout the whole game, and I kind of hate it, but that's okay. I I hated it too, but it kind of grew grew on me. Yeah, <laughs> I now touch every flower in every level it's, just to hear what the fuck that. Well, it's it's like, just weird oh, to be playing to Mario. Say? God, that's cute. Everyone, everyone in Mario speaks in text. And vocal sounds, I like know, yeah. fucking sounds. And then all of a sudden, this guy comes up and goes, wow, what a great adventure. It's like, oh, God. Don't, <laughs> know, don't come near so me. so jarring. <laughs> like, wait, dialogue in a Mario game? Why just the flower? <laughs> I know. Andrew, it, it kind of sounded like, uh, what, are the, what, what are the presentations called? The uh, directs? It, oh, it Nintendo directs? Like, yeah, it kind of sounds like the, uh, the translator for Nintendo directs. A little bit. <laughs> yeah, does. What did you think of that? Next up, we have a great new game from this beloved developer. <laughs> I always love that voice. I love the directs. I think game. the direct presentation styles are so fucking cute. I they're, they're cute, but I'll never forgive them. Yeah, I'll never funny. forgive directs. I'll never forgive directs. They they genuinely killed E3 as soon as like other yeah. developers or, or publishers figured out that they could do their own thing. Yeah, um, that that's that's what's killed E3 definitely. I it's a pros and cons because at the same time I would rather I have the info as soon as possible instead of waiting once a year. Oh, but it was so exciting! I lived for E3. It was yeah. like <laughs> it was like Christmas. It was cool when you were a kid. Yeah, but to go back to what Kaya was saying, I still say the Switch is my favorite console ever made, and I still stand by that. And it's because I don't give a fuck about graphics. That's that is a crazy statement. You prefer it over like original Xbox or 360 and PlayStation. That blows 100%. my fucking mind. Cuz I can play it on a I can play the Switch on an yeah. airplane. I can play the Switch on the toilet. I can play the Switch anywhere. I can't play those outside of my that's house. A, that's a low <laughs> I don't know, man. I, You're I like, playing it for like one or two good games a year, which are fantastic fine. games. But they are, yeah. They still yeah. knock it out of the park. That's still more than other companies usually. Yeah, like this I, year I, alone. I get that. I think I think Switch has won the console generation because yeah. those games carry so hard. But to say it's your favorite console of all time blows my mind. When things like the 360 and all that were literally game changers, it, yeah. like. It was banger after banger every single Tuesday. I know, but it just feels when you look at, let's say, the peak era of the 360, it kind of feels like it's one style that you get with it. What? Yeah, it's kind of that mature, leaning kind of... I don't know how to describe it, but okay, so Halo and Call of Duty feel similar and then it kind of blends into assassin's creed and dead rising like just this kind of third character action yeah, violence my game. very first game my very first game that i loved on xbox 360 it was the first game i got with it was viva pinata i was just about to say like some of the most popular games were not what you're describing at all I feel like those are the ones that people remember, though, and talk about for Pete 360. I don't know where you're getting that from. Like, when people say, uh, what's the pirate. best 360 games ever, I don't think many yeah. people say Viva Pinata compared to Halo 3 yeah, or... Yeah. Well, that maybe not. I mean, Viva Pinata would be on that list. But that just goes to show you how big and monumental those games were, though. Right. I, I don't know. I just get more out of Nintendo games, I guess. I get more I mean, dopamine. If it's yeah, it's subjective. If if that's yeah, I, again, I totally understand the Nintendo games, but to say that the whole console is your favorite blows my mind. I don't know, but man. Have been, you played I, Mario Odyssey? It's pretty. It's pretty good. It's good. I love Mario. It's pretty Odyssey. good. It's pretty good. Yeah. And so is Wonder. They hit it oh, out of Wonder's the fucking great park too. with this one. How far are you guys into it, by the way? I How many worlds? just beat the Snow Palace. Mm. So level two, I think. Jackson. World two. Yeah. I've just started Snow Palace. Okay. You guys aren't yeah. far. It's not so far good. at all. My, Are you playing it on your own? I, it's No, I'm not. playing with my wife on mm. couch co op. Mm -hmm. And that is my only complaint is that the camera system isn't <laughs> it kinda gets in the way and is in yeah, the way a lot of it, the time. Yeah. Yeah. Do have you, you play um, on your own? Have no, you I've seen that they own. basically added Dark Souls ghosts to the game? <laughs> Dark Souls goes. If you oh, so we ones? didn't get to try it because I was playing with four people. Oh, but if you have one or two, okay, you can hop me. online and watch other people's ghosts play Mario. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, 
I think it's a fun idea. It's a fun way to discover secrets organically because you watch them do it and then follow them like you do in Dark Souls. Yeah, they kind of do that in oh, Mario Maker. Uh, you can see Mario where people Maker. died in Mario yeah. Maker. Yeah, yeah, it pops up like with an X or yeah. something. Yeah. Hmm. Well, the only issue with the camera system in this one is that depending on how many players you have, you can play up to four player. And, you know, one, two, three, four player. And it doesn't lock you into, like, the save games. You can just immediately at the beginning when launching the game just pick how many people you're with at any given time. The issue is that the camera only follows one of you at any given time. The mm -hmm. lead player. And that's usually denoted with you have a crown over your head. And the problem is all the other players are just fucked. You know, if they can't <laughs> keep up or if you want yeah. to go left and they want to go oh, right, it doesn't that. matter. The camera just follows the main person. And the issue is that it doesn't just like put the other players off screen. It kills them immediately. Yeah. Like if the bottom of your feet <laughs> touch yeah. the bottom of the screen as the main player is jumping up, you just die. And it's also inconsistent because sometimes you don't die. Sometimes you only die if you're too far away. But in any case, you the other players just don't get to explore anything. They always have to stay close to the main player, which yeah. becomes really, really difficult sometimes in like mm -hmm. faster levels because you just cannot be in sync perfectly yeah, with another stupid. person. And, and, and you're right. And, and it is frustrating. And there have been many, many times I've been killed both intentionally and in unintentionally by that. But it's still fun. I've never gotten actually frustrated playing that game. I always consider that part of the chaotic fun. Like no, I'm it's playing not it with frustrating. It just you like you can't help but think why didn't you just like split screen it split right screen, when it's yeah. two players just split the screen in half and let the other person because again it's just maybe they're not as good at you as platforming maybe they just want to go down a different branch in the level but you're not allowed it's just whatever the main player is doing and it mm -hmm. also switches to who the main player is if you are the lead player you have the crown and you die then the other person becomes the lead and now that that fucking switches things up now you're confused all over again. and I see I like that though. This yeah. is a Nintendoism. This is some. This is literally an issue that existed back in the early two thousands for the Lego games until they discovered split screen capabilities, and so yeah, Ninte Nintendo's just behind the game on that factor again. There's, there's plenty I of will those. concede to you that there should be an option. I would love if when you start the game, you pick: Do you want your character ca uh, camera to be split screen or the lead player? And you can choose. Yep. I think that would be the best diet option. And yeah, yeah, you do get frustrating deaths and you do get bullshit because of the crown. Having said that, I love fighting for the crown because one of the mechanics <laughs> is one of the mechanics. If you have four players is whoever is highest on the flagpole becomes the lead player for the next mission. So what me and my yeah. friends would often result into is when we know it's towards the end of the level, we'll just start all speed running each other to try to get the top first. So you often want to be the first to grab the flagpole to get the crown. But then if you don't get the very top, someone can take their time a little bit and get the very top because it first judges by height and then by speed who's the lead player and so it's kind of a, a mistakes into miracles thing because it is frustrating and it is kind of simplistic but it can lead to a lot of fun where you're like oh fuck I gotta be lead player oh I'm it finishing can. the level it, early it's super fun yeah to tease each other like if you're Yoshi you can spit a Koopa shell at them to kill them so you become the <laughs> yeah. leader and such that <laughs> Classic, is fun yeah. yes Mm -hmm. But it just it makes some levels completely unplayable for everyone except the lead player, especially the very fast ones. There is a, I don't want to spoil too much, but there's a perk where you run super fast and you are allowed to jump in the air even after you've run off a platform. Oh my god, and the that's level amazing. goes so fast that you're just screwed. You either are in perfect sync, which is near impossible, or the lead player is the only one on that level that gets to play, basically, and everybody else just dies off camera as you Still shoot off. So My, that's sort of annoying. Yeah. Should have yeah. just split screened it, zoomed out, or even, like, I would I would have settled for a picture-in-picture -picture of the person who's off screen. Like, anything. Oh, yeah. Instead of just killing them. You can you can also do some pretty strong trolling in that game pretty good. Like crushing people with the pillars is always a classic. Throwing shells at them <laughs> is a yeah. classic. The one that I do, it's a it's a new meta that I don't know if a lot of people think about. You have a pool of shared items. 
So if you if you collect extra items, they go into this little stockpile, and any player at any time can summon them. So you can trade power ups, or if you're hurt, you can get a mushroom. So what I'll do is I'll find an enemy, and if they're busy like getting coins or fucking around, I'll just get intentionally hit, and then use all our items without saying anything. <laughs> so they may have nothing, and I'm fully powered up. It's a great game. It's a very good game. You're a selfish it's lover. Ah uh, yes, but it means I come out on top. So I'm fine with that. Also, I have to praise the enemy variety. I, I played this game for, I don't know how much. It's probably like five hours now. And I'm, we just finished the last world, which is the magma world, or it was for us. I don't know if you have to go in order. Wait, only f five hours long? The game is only five hours long? Honestly, I don't know how long it's been, but it might, might be more. But yeah, if, I mean, if you're just binging it, I don't know. We just unlocked Bowser's Castle thing. We haven't been in it yet, so I don't know how long the game is. I'm just saying I unlocked the last area at the beginning, I guess, hmm. which is the magma area, and we did all of those. Um, but yeah, enemy variety. Because I found myself more than once throughout the game thinking, oh shit, there's the Koopas. And I didn't even realize that I hadn't seen them until three hours into the game, because there's so many new enemies that you don't even remember all the classics at some points, like, yeah. oh, there's the fucking little lava ball that jumps out of the lava. Oh, there's mm -hmm. the lava pillars, the fire pillars that you usually see in the Bowser levels. Because there's so much content, so many enemies. It's just a super charming game. You can also be an elephant, mm -hmm. and that's cool. You can be an elephant, yes. Yeah. yeah. You can be an elephant, and they have a new bubble fire. Bubble, bubble people, fire. yeah. The bubble, yeah. <laughs> the only thing I don't like so far... Truly, the only thing is that you can only play Yoshi on easy mode. And that just upsets me. Yeah. On one hand, I've been playing Yoshi as my Mario main since I was five. On the other hand, I'm too much of a man to play easy mode. So it's like, what do I do? What do I do? Yeah, oh, I think well. they just put those in for if you want to play with like Nabbit, Nabber, whatever his Nabbit name as is, well, that yeah. little purple thing. Mm -hmm. He's like apparently the super easy. You're basically not even participating because he can just run <laughs> through enemies and he's immortal. That's the uh, that's the little brother character. Yeah, yeah. You can so he can just feel like he's participating, which is cute. It's cute. Um, Yoshi is kind of a yeah easy mode. He because he gets a little float skill, which is super fucking cute because he makes like a little struggling sound as he's like giving his little best. To keep afloat, and his, he gets red in the fucking face. It's just such a charming game. But I still like Yoshi, because even though he doesn't get the power-ups, he gets to swallow stuff, which I just enjoy. And he looks like a douche, and people get annoyed at me when I play Yoshi, because he looks like such a smug piece of shit in Mario Party. <laughs> so, I'm Team Yoshi. Yoshi Supremacy. I've always been Monty Mole, but I doubt he's in the game. Uh, yeah, Monty you might be surprised Mole. to find out he's not in the game. <laughs> <laughs> what, they're doing Monty Mole dirty, I swear to God. Who's Monty Mole? I actually don't remember him. Look, he's just a mole. I don't know where what, what he is in like the lore of Mario, but he's he's in a he's Mario a mole. party. Yeah. Would have been better might... than fucking Toad. They have three Toads. They have Toad, Yellow, Toad Blue, and Toadette. Fuck I yeah. Completely toad. Everyone loves Yellow Toad. That's everyone's favorite character. God, I, I know. Hate. The Mustard Toad. I... Great. I'm sitting there going... <laughs> some pieces of shit. That was well, definitely more of a Marge Simpson than a yeah, Toad. Yeah, that was Marge. Yeah. No, it isn't. That's Toad. You guys have not listened to Toad. Homer. That is the exact sound he makes and it's insufferable. Homie. I hate that thing. Oh, I wish I could punt it. And <laughs> Marge! new game is that it takes place in an entirely new kingdom, not the Mushroom Kingdom, so now you have, what are they called? Poplets? I don't remember. I, I gotta be honest, I have experienced zero story. I just ran yeah. through the game. <laughs> no, they're the things that like, they have flower heads instead of mushroom heads now. Oh, the guys who bloom when you get an item? Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of sexual, weirdly sexual. Yeah. What? So you show up and the first guy you're with is like, yeah, there's like a worm in Mario's head, right? Like a, a parasitic worm. Isn't there a parasitic worm in the beginning and he lands in Mario's head? Right? I don't I'm not making this up, this right? Game? You're playing a different game. <laughs> no, there's a worm that lives in Mario's head and he shows up and he's like, oh, look at that flower. It's going to fucking bloom. And then it blooms everywhere. And it's like, oh, that feels so much better. Thank you, Mario. And it happens every time you go to the item house. I'm not well, crazy. Because they're happy. 
I don't, I, I don't know why that's sexual. <laughs> Andrew can't see Mario games without sexualizing them. Yeah. Well, also, I don't. I just don't know how a worm being in someone's head is even sexual. Now I'm laughing because I'm fucking sure there's a worm in the beginning that lives in Mario's head in the beginning of the game, and you guys are making me sound like that doesn't happen. I don't think I'm going to look up the intro the and find out his name. His name? Oh, you're talking... Of, yeah, the prince. That's yeah. Not a, the, the caterpillar. He doesn't live in his brain like a brain Yeah, worm. thank you. The caterpillar, yeah. He sits yeah. on his shoulder like a parrot. Yeah, but when he does the animation <laughs> where he goes away, it looks like he's burrowing into Mario's brain <laughs> and hiding hey, there. Jesus. <laughs> I haven't played the game, but what you're saying sounds insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm watching the cutscene now. He's the prince of the region, and he's like, look at my cool wonder flowers, and Bowser shows up, and he's like, I'm gonna take the wonder flowers, who could see this coming? And the prince goes, we have to go get the wonder flowers and stop Bowser, I'll go with you, and he, like, hides in Mario's skull for safekeeping. Mario becomes a drooling a fucking cat. zombie. No, <laughs> I know, he's but in it, his brain. I think he burrows into the lead <laughs> player, and not everyone wears hats, like, Peach doesn't wear a hat, so he's just buried in there. She has hair. <laughs> Let me live with my lore, damn it. Yeah, let, don't take that away from I'm him. Don't take the wonder away from Andrew. It's the magic of Nintendo. Come on, man. Brain I'm also looking at the intro right now. The The story also is that Bowser comes in and merges himself with the castle. Yeah, which and is he becomes so a living castle, which is he becomes so a fucking he, dumb man. He becomes cool. a Gurren Logan because he has two heads and faces on top of each other. <laughs> It's awesome, and he has like generic metal music playing as he's like floating in the air, being a castle. Yeah. What do you guys want the next uh, Mario game to be? Because immediately off the I top want of my Odyssey head, I want an Odyssey sequel. No, I, yeah. I want Mario, a Mario Odyssey two, hands down. Mario Dark Souls game where it's like super vicious combat, and like the world has been destroyed by Bowser, and and Mario nah. is like an undead has to make his way through. I want a game where you play as a worm and you have to bury into Mario characters' heads <laughs> yeah. and control them. Yeah. You could make it a labyrinth game, like in his oh, brain wrinkles. Maze game. Yeah. I guess that's just Psychonauts. You want Psychonauts, but in Mario's <laughs> brain. Yeah. That'd be cool. No, I, I'm, I'm fully with Kaya. I want Mario Odyssey 2, except if we take yes, Psychonauts, yeah. maybe actually trippy levels would be cool, like impossible architecture. That uh, Hang on. Brilliant idea. <laughs> Mario, Mario's wonderful Odyssey. You take the oh. wonder flowers and put them in Mario mm. Odyssey. Yes. That yes, would be yes. so That would be cool. the best 3D game of all time. So like each level has a, a wonder version as well? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's, oh God, I would pay $170 for that. Fuck yeah. yeah that, that would be good. They got to make an, Od an Odyssey 2, right? Or something. I They're hope so. I hope, yeah. yeah. I mean, I assume they're saving it now for the next console. I mean, rumor has it the Switch successors coming out next year, mm -hmm. right? They've already had two bangers this year with... Allegedly behind closed doors to uh, different devs and reviewers, they've previewed the beta of the Switch 2 or Switch Pro, whatever it's called. Allegedly. Probably gonna have all the processing power yeah. of an Android phone from 10 years ago, but still. It's somehow inferior to the Switch 1, like in terms of hardware. <laughs> we downgraded it. Yeah. It's it, just nothing but a phone. too powerful. <laughs> It was giving it was giving our developers too much freedom in making their games, so we wanted to really curtail that. Ch Charlie, I wanted to ask you because I know Andrew and Kaya aren't playing it, but I am. I'm almost finished. I'm eighty percent of the way through my one hundred percent journey. Uh, how are you feeling about Spider Man Two? I think it's good. I think it's very good. I don't think it's game of the year, but I think it's good. I uh, yeah, agreed. I don't think it's game of the year, and also I don't think i'm in i don't think i'm enjoying it it's weird i don't think i'm enjoying it more than <laughs> okay, i enjoyed i don't think i'm enjoying it more than i enjoyed the first game um i think the story was more that. cohesive in the first game it felt more enjoyable from what i've been told from friends who are playing it it's very safe it's it's just it's, exactly it's, what you expect it, very, very yeah. it doesn't it doesn't feel like it does anything new to the spider-man universe or spider-man story and it doesn't it feels like it's just rehashing ideas and also the gameplay doesn't feel like it's made any like major adjustments piggybacking have you experienced a lot of bugs 
Yeah, I actually have. I was surprised that nobody touched on it before the game came out. Like, I, I've found entire different dimensions through, like, walls and stuff. And yeah, also so I've just... I've had that too, actually, which is very surprising, because I didn't have, like, any in the first one. Yeah, neither. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of bugs. Like, definitely a lot of... Uh, have you been getting the issue where enemy, uh, like, punch indicators aren't popping up at all sometimes, and you'll just get hit? No, I haven't had that. It's. I was talking to Dankin about it. He's also had it. It's very annoying. But yeah, definitely, definitely buggy for sure. Needed a few more months probably. So you can still get through the game though with that. Yeah, it's not like game breaking bugs. It doesn't ruin it, but it is a little unfortunate that it is kind of buggy. Yeah. So I'd sit around like an eighty or an eight f- for the game. Personally. Uh, I'm leaning towards like an eighty-five on it right now. I don't think it's like some huge improvement, but it is still a very fun game. Did you guys see the dunk? Uh, this is interesting. Did you guys see the donkey video on game reviews again? Like his annual video game review viewer video where he was, he was highlighting the juxtaposition between uh, positive reviews from IGN getting like tons of comments, like praising the review. And then as soon as they dip under an eight out of 10 for the review, it is just constant hate in the fucking comments <laughs> about how, how the reviewer didn't understand the game, how the reviewer, like they needed to choose a reviewer who actually likes that genre of games and such. So it seems like eight is the sweet point for reviews. Like if you go over that, like you'll, you'll get praise. And if you go under that, you're immediately just fucking yelled at by the crowd. Yeah. That's the split. Eight, eight, eight is the number if you want to play it safe. I think it's been that way for a while, though. Yeah, it's just fucking stupid. It Go is. Up. So just have a new system that's unspoken. Eight is unplayable trash. Nine is mediocre. <laughs> yeah. Ten is a good game that you recommend. Yeah, we're on a three-point mm-hmm. scale. <laughs> Eleven is game of the year now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, but you have to do it like that, secretively. Like You cannot tell them that eight is actually the bottom. Yeah, yeah. True. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't want that secret getting out with IGN. <laughs> That'd be disastrous, yeah. I've never seen an actual number put to it, but it was interesting to see where the line was drawn now. And I guess it's always been that way. All right, that's going to do it for this week's episode. Thanks, guys, for hanging out. Patreon.com slash the official podcast mm-hmm. for bonus episodes. We got Potiphar, not Potiphar's fuck, Criminally Stupid, stuff like that over on the new YouTube channel. If you're listening to audio, highly recommend you come check us out on the YouTube channel. Uh, because you'll be able to see additional stuff there that you wouldn't see anywhere else. Like our faces. What's the name of the YouTube channel, Jackson? The brand new one we made just for the show. It's at the official YT channel. You're goddamn right it is. Links in the description as well. It's it's doing fantastic. What's our Patreon? Oh, okay. Patreon.com slash the official podcast. And what's my name? Okay, you're uh, at Hugby's. <gasps> it's just Hugby's, right? I meant my regular name, but that's even better. Thank you. At Andrew. At Andrew. And what's the square root of nine? Uh, three. Got it. Nailed it. All right. And what's Good. the capital Thanks, of Australia? <laughs> Canberra. <laughs> Wait, what is it? Canberra. <laughs> that's a stupid one. Yeah, that's dumb. I don't want to play this anymore. You never heard, you've never heard yeah. of Canberra? No. How could you? Ne- oh, well, that's fucked up. I've heard of Washington, D.C. You guys haven't heard of Canberra? No. Canberra is yeah, it's entire, an actual country. It's a city state. No, it's a, it's a city state in the middle. Well, not middle. Middle. Name of one Wales. important thing about Canberra. Uh, it was founded after our inception, and they called oh. it. It's in a state called the Australian Capital Territory, and it's where all the <laughs> prime ministers live. Yeah, boring. Right, I'm gonna put. On, I'm putting on Mario Wonder literally as you're talking. <laughs> yeah. All right. See you guys. See you all next Bye, time. everybody. <laughs>